Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. So, LCS organizations are absolutely embarrassing themselves once again. And a lot of you, uh, I know, like, my, my content around here is usually like 50% LCS, 50% LEC. Sometimes we cover some international stories. So, I know all the LEC fans are going to be like, I mean, yeah, nothing new there. LCS is always embarrassing themselves, and even some of the LCS fans will fully admit that, yeah, the LCS especially recently has been embarrassing in a lot of ways. You might be thinking, well, what is it this time? Is it, you know, just the level of play overall in the LCS? Is it the viewership? Is it just how bad some of our teams and players are? Is it our international results that we're going to be covering once again? You know, we haven't had a team get out of Worlds in however long, but actually today we're going to be talking about the the academy scene the amateur scene um some of the stuff going on behind the scenes as far as player development where recently obviously the owners you know this was a couple months ago were asking for uh, a lifting of the import rule because they're saying guys look we're doing everything we can to develop young na talent but young na talent sucks it, it, there's nothing we can do about it we cannot be good enough internationally uh to compete at worlds at msi or even uh you know just in terms of viewership and stuff to have high quality high enough quality games um to to compete and, and we need to bring in some some other players because na uh players are, are not cutting it but recently we have had the spring proving ground starting up where we're seeing the top academy teams and the top amateur teams taking on each other uh and the result the results have really been shocking and they've got a lot of people talking so in this video today we're going to be covering some of those results and cover why this is overall a really really big and embarrassing story and situation for all these lcs organizations and really starts to question what these lcs owners and organizations are talking about in terms of uh are they really doing everything they can in terms of talent development are na players really that bad or are lcs organizations terribly mismanaged and terribly run because honestly that's kind of where i'm leaning towards but before we get into that i just want to mention real quick if you guys have not already please take a second and click on that subscribe button i would appreciate it so so much really helping me run those numbers up um and it helps you guys stay up to date on all my latest content also dropping a like on this video helps you on a ton of the youtube algorithm i would appreciate it so so much with that being said let's get right into this so this is something that a ton, a ton, a ton of people have been talking about. This uh, article comes from Invin, where they said amateur teams currently hold the head-to-head -head record against academy teams in the 2021 LCS Proving Grounds. Now, we're just a couple of games into this, but still, this is a shocking, shocking statistic. So, in Proving Grounds, the top six teams from the 2021 LCS Academy Spring Split are joined by 10 teams from either the bottom four academy spot, the slots or other teams in the amateur scene, which not only allows independent teams a fair shot, but also promotes the development of the amateur scene in North America. And this new proving ground style, that's what it was supposed to do. Um, rather than having academy teams kind of fight amongst each other, it was to allow more uh, young NA talent to, to get a chance at playing competitive League of Legends, to get more people uh, opportunities to play against some of the best academy players and academy orgs, but also some of the best amateur teams, and amateur orgs. And overall, I think it has been a massive, massive success. Uh, but when we take a look at the bracket right now, uh, we will see that so far in the proving grounds, you know, we have 16 teams. It's a 16-team tournament double elimination um we have had some pretty shocking results so far i guess we can zoom in a little bit just to make this uh, a little bit easier to see um but uh so for the most part you know we have a, a c9 and dig obviously two academy organizations taking on each other i think this is dignitas mirage um which is their third team actually so um you know c9 academy being able to knock them down not a big deal but here we have zoo knocking down tsm academy and this was a big uh surprise and a big shock to a lot of people but then also zoo going on and having a very close very competitive series against c9 academy who's the number one overall team headed into this um and this series almost went the way of zoo there it went to game three and game three was very very close and could have went either team's way um so that was pretty shocking but then you know we continue to go on through this uh dignitas academy uh taking down wild card uh there you go but then here is kind of the big place that a lot of people are talking about no org beating golden guardians academy and then barrage 2 owing team liquid academy having you know two more total series wins for amateur teams over lcs uh, academy organizations and some of the big things to keep in mind here is that for the most part not entirely some teams uh, do make a little bit of a salary they do get paid a little bit but for the most part um these academy teams are making money they're getting salaries obviously they are contracted under their lcs organizations but uh these amateur teams for the most part are not getting paid so not only do they not have access to the infrastructure coaching staff um everything that goes in part with being part of an lcs organization they uh, you know are worse funded they have they're supposed to have worse coaches worse infrastructure um they're not getting paid so uh it's hard to even 
how can you bring in quality talent uh, when some of your uh, you know competitors are offering money and you're not offering money you're just offering a spotlight um, and a chance to hopefully develop it and get better in the future but the Academy teams are all offering that as well um, so you you know you have the money these are multi-million dollar organizations paying players providing them with their coaching staff even access to scrimming and playing with uh, you know the LCS organization LCS members and all their facilities and everything and they are losing games uh, to some of these teams. And like the article talks about, they now have a worse record against amateur teams uh, than amateur teams do against them, which is crazy. And that is absolutely, to me, super, super embarrassing and brings up so many different red flags. Like, uh, I mean, when we talk about gbay 99 had this tweet he's a content creator i've you know followed and, and looked up to for a long time he said every time an lcs owner says we are making great strides to invest in our academy teams and develop the future of local na talent they should be forced to watch all these series where no name amateur players constantly embarrass professionally coached lcs orgs and then obviously he has the screenshot from uh, no org beating golden guardians and barrage beating team liquid now this is not to say that every player on one of these teams is a no name yes some of these amateur teams do have former lcs players some of them do have former former academy players but some of them don't and either way it still shows that at the worst or at best the lcs orgs are not picking out the best uh academy players and amateur players out there that the best talents are not in uh our academy teams the so like if there was no proving grounds this year if there was just the academy with no amateur scene the academy teams would be missing out on some of the top players and top teams that are out there and that first off should be a big big sign because again when you have money uh and you're being paid to scout and find all the guys are you gonna have 100 percent accuracy in scouting no no i mean there's not a chance but should our academy teams be better than our amateur team and be able to sustain a better record against our amateur teams overall could should the scouting always be at least that good i would say so i would think over the course of tournaments and stuff that your academy team should not be losing more often than not against your amateur teams when the amateur teams are fighting such an uphill battle um so you know the the history of the lcs has been a lot of seeing the same faces seeing a lot of the same players um holding on to veterans too long not giving the next kind of wave a chance not trying out young players that show promise and potential but also not developing the players that show promise and potential there's so many guys who have have shown some promise or potential in the amateur scene in the collegiate scene in the academy scene got into the lcs and they've gotten worse over time and i think it is a huge indictment against the lcs organizations the coaching stats the management the things that are in place in the lcs to where uh you know in korea in china in europe all the time you see guys come out of nowhere and become the next uh superstars of the future or even just the next really really good players uh of the future and to me we have not seen that happen as much in the lcs yes now it has happened sometimes yes we have had some good uh young up-and-coming players you know recently there's been Spica, there's been tactical johnson he's pretty good you know there's a lot of guys coming up but We've also seen a lot of guys come up and just completely flame out of the LCS and really not develop over the course of their careers. I'm thinking guys like, uh, you know, bigger names like maybe Mike Young, Contracts, uh, Acadian, guys like that who uh, seem to have a lot of potential at one point in their career. Um, but then for whatever reason, orgs were never really able to, you know, continue to build upon that. And now we're a couple of years uh, removed from those. And those guys have maybe even gotten worse, if not just completely plateaued. Um, and again, the LCS organizations, they just want to keep importing and importing and importing. And that is such a short-term short-sighted solution where just like all the other regions out there to have long-term success and to eventually be better than them you're gonna have to develop them and could it be the case that North America does not have the same level of players that some of these other regions have absolutely but this tournament to me this proving ground tournament is proving to me and this is something that I have suspected for a long time and a lot of people have as well that there is actually North American talent out there there is good North American players but they're not getting opportunities and when they do they are getting opportunities in places with terrible coaches terrible coaching staffs terrible infrastructure uh and they're they're getting under organizations and getting under leadership that has no idea how to help them improve how to help them get better so not only is this tournament showing to me that again the right players are not getting opportunities but that there's coaching and coaching staffs and analysts uh and other organizations that could really uh, help out the entire North American scene that these amateur players without getting paid and without having access to these multi-million dollar facilities and staffs and organizations and leadership and management blah 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 blah, blah have found a way to get so good over this spring split to where 
academy teams didn't want them before and now they're beating those same academy teams uh, again not every single player is in the, the spot where just academy teams didn't want them some people uh chose to go to amateur for a bunch of different reasons like Alorum is on one of these teams he said he had academy offers but um being on an amateur team allows him the flexibility of being able to go to any lcs team where if he was on academy team he'd be kind of locked into that roster and some people are in that boat for sure but some people aren't some people were simply told that they weren't good enough for academy teams that they'd rather import somebody else that they'd rather go another way and they're now kind of shoving it right back in these teams faces you know this is a 2-0 between team liquid and barrage it's a 2-0 between no org and golden guardians like that is simply not good enough uh and that should be a major red flag and put a wrench in this whole talk of we need to import more when really the answer is we need to scout better we need to coach better we need better uh analysts we need better everything we need to take the players we have and have them be able to get better split over split and better year over year not just we need the best players in the world and then we'll bring them over to north america and we'll stagnate with them um because that's that's what's been happening even when we get the top level talent from other regions they're not coming over here and getting better because the na orgs the na coaches the na staffs have no idea how to make people get better they don't know how to play winning league of legends they don't know how to play a good style but they also don't know how to develop talent and if that is the case then this is always going to be a problem whether we recruit damn Juan gaming to come over to north america uh it's going to be an issue and, and you know people have said that that's just how it's got to be because our ping sucks because our team sucks because we have no talent or whatever but again some of these amateur organizations are showing us that it is possible to get better over the course of the season it is possible even with little money little finance little resources to improve over the course of the season and have yourselves playing better than some of these academy teams and again is it a scouting issue is it a coaching issue is it a player I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it at least brings up a lot of questions. It at least brings up a lot of debate. And then again, brings me back to TSM and Treats this past offseason, where TSM had Treats right in front of them, and they he could have they could have promoted him to be their starting support for much, much less money than they ended up spending on Sword Art. But they decided that, uh, you know, imports were way better. And Treats obviously still would have been considered an import, but he was already here in North America. He was already developing as an academy talent. And then Treats goes over to the LEC, and he becomes possibly the best support in the lec this past season again there's an argument to be made for mickey there's an argument to be made for a couple of other guys but treats is in that mvp discussion on a very very middling team in the lec and he could have been on tsm tsm literally could have had him for much much less than the millions that they spent on sword art but again was that a uh like a scouting issue was that um the fact that tsm hadn't had the best results with treats because of coaching or because of development or something you know i don't exactly know again but uh it's just another sign of if that's what's happening with treats if we're letting a guy like him go and a potential mvp candidate in the lec which is a better league than the lcs go over to europe for practically nothing then what's happening with these amateur players that we haven't seen on the lcs stage that we haven't seen scrim with tsm directly for months and months and months uh you know I, I believe that a lot more players are falling through the cracks and i think this is a big red flag a big sign for the lcs organizations and i hope it's a wake-up call i hope it's a wake-up call to reggie to steve to jack and to even all the other lcs owners that uh there's a big problem going on right now your coaches your staffs your organizations are simply not good enough and it is embarrassing and it should be but it's not too late to make a change but you have to acknowledge that there is a problem there first but that is pretty much it for this video today ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching i would appreciate it if you did drop a like on this video it really helps me out the youtube algorithm leave a comment down below what do you think is the issue going on in this scenario why are our academy teams losing to amateur orgs at the rate that they are right now i'd love to hear your guys thoughts and opinions subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content hopefully I catch you guys in the next one until then, peace.